Hey guys and welcome. Um, today we are going to be installing in a dual boot configuration Windows NT4, Windows 95 um, SR2, um, Windows 3.1 and DOS 7.1. Um, this is a particularly interesting dual boot as NT and DOS don't like to talk to each other and we're using DOS 7 instead of DOS 6 which Windows 3.1 doesn't like um, so yeah this will be fun so the computer in question that we're using is a well it's my old time machine it's got a 200 megahertz Pentium MMX in it uh, overclocked to 250 megahertz even though that doesn't really matter um, it's got a CD drive just a plain CD drive, actually it's a CD writer Standard three and a um, quarter inch floppy drive. Um, it's got a 80 gigabyte hard drive in it, but we're going to be using this hard drive because I don't want to destroy the configuration of it. This is also another 80 gigabyte hard drive. Um, it's got 64 megabytes of SD RAM. Um, it's got a Sound Blaster 16 Vibra um, PNP card, so that'll be interesting to set up with DOS 7. I've not done that before. And then it's got an S3 Trio 64 um, uh, video adapter. So no hardware acceleration or anything. So yes, we'll get started. Um, how we're going to be installing it is we're going to be using disks and we're also going to be using CF cards. I do have CF cards with anything that I don't, can't fit on a disk to copy files over for like updates and stuff like that. Um, some out of writable disks at the moment and I've got an adapter so that I can plug CF cards into an IDE um, slot right here. So it's got a little adapter on it for Molex because we don't have another floppy cable and we're going to use this. So we'll get started. Alright, so first of all, we're going to install Windows NT4. Um, actually, no, no, we're not. First of all, we're going to partition the hard drive. Because Windows NT will just take priority over the hard drive otherwise. So I just let the computer boot into the DOS 7.1 setup disk. Now the order of installation we're going to do is we're going to do Windows NT4, then we're going to install DOS, and then we're going to install Windows 95, and then after that we'll install Windows 3.1. And we're going to get all the drivers working and everything, all the sound drivers for all the operating systems. So this is going to be fun. Now the reason why I'm choosing DOS 7 is because it supports FAT32, so we can use a larger hard drive. Um, the problem with Windows NT or NT4 is that it only supports hard drives up to 8 gigabytes. So our NT4 install is going to be a little bit gimped. I'm going to restrict it to a FAT16 drive instead of an NTFS drive because DOS won't be able to read it otherwise. But for Windows 95, 3.1, and DOS, we're going to be using FAT32 all the way with long file names supported and everything. Um, we're also going to be using a single partition for those three DOS-based operating systems, so we'll just quit out of this. Alright, now the DOS 7.1 setup doesn't really have FDisk. After you install it, it does, but instead it's got some third-party, because it's not an official release, it's got some third-party application called GDisk, so we'll just list the partition information of this hard drive to see if there's anything on it. Alright, so there's no partition, so let's create let me just figure out how to use it, and we'll create a partition. So we want it's a th it's a 32 gigabyte hard drive. We want four gigabytes for NT. So we'll need 28 gigabytes for um, DOS. So we want to go G disk disk one, create primary, and then the size switch, and then we want 28 gigabytes. Let it do its thing. Alright, cool. And now we'll just reboot the computer. 
just to make sure that it's saved. So we'll be swapping back and forth between using the CD drive and the CF cards throughout this install. And that's going to be a bit of a pain, but you're going to have to just bear with me with that. Now we'll just format C drive. We don't need to create the Windows NT partition. Windows NT setup can do that itself. So we only need to create the DOS partition. Ah, oh, you shit thing. Well, that's a bit of a problem. Alright, you know what? We'll install DOS first. That way it'll format the DOS partition. It doesn't matter if we have to un um, reinstall DOS, it only takes a couple of minutes. Alright. It's got mouse support, which is good. Do a normal install of everything. Yeah, this is what we want. This will take a while, so I'll come back once it's done. Alright, we're back. Um, my noise suppression was fucking me over before, so hopefully... I've got that right now. Maybe that looks good. Looking at Audacity. We might have a bit more noise now. Anyway. Yes, we want to rewrite the bootmaster record. We'll just call this DOS for now. Um, don't want to install any add-ons just yet. Okay. And let's let DOS install. DOS 7 doesn't really take too long to install, so um, it shouldn't be too long before we're running NT. DOS 7 should be able to utilize all 64 megabytes of my RAM as well. And in um, and allow Windows 3.1 to use it as well. All right, disk two. The good thing about using error appropriate hardware is drivers for it should be quite easy to find. Uh, Sound Blaster 16 and the S3 Trio should be pretty easy to find. The S3 Trio 64 that's in this thing is the same video card that DOSBox simulates, so that's a bonus. And I'm going to need to have to find a network adapter for this computer. Um, one that's compatible with Windows 95 and possibly Windows 3.1, but I don't really know how the networking stack works with Windows 3.1, so I'll have to do some experimenting there. No, I do not want the DOS startup logo, that defeats the purpose of having DOS. I do like the bit, the boot log though. Yes, uh, I like to enable smart drive. And we should be good. Alright, now we'll insert the Windows NT4 disk.
I'm going to have to go into the BIOS here and make sure it'll boot off the CD. Here somewhere. There we are. Perfect. Now we'll just wait for the NT setup to load. Alright, so it's now booting the Windows NT kernel. Um, this doesn't have Service Pack 6, so I'll have to install that as well. But what I think we'll do is we'll install the operating systems, and then we'll go through and install all the drivers, unless the operating systems pick up some of the drivers. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. All the way down, F8. Yep, that looks good. Alright. Now, it's not showing anything else. So, that is a bit of a pain. Right. Well, back into DOS. Now we should have access to FDisk. Yes, we do. Okay. Create a DOS petition. Okay. Try extended DOS petition. I'm kind of tempted to use GDisk. Hey. Yeah, no, I'm not liking this. We'll just use GDisk. And I want FDisk to stuff it up. Even though it probably won't. Alright. Ah, you. C Sorry. Censor that out. It's trying to boot off the Windows NT disk. Okay, we want to fault. Alright. <laughs> this is like a Draco 1 video. It's okay, that was kind of my intention. That did not boot off the floppy drive. That would be because it's not the boot disk. That would be our problem. You're using the wrong floppy. There we go. Let's see what happens.
create another, yes. And it's picking it up as fat 32, which is not what I wanted. Um, You know what, let's, because it's unformatted, let's try and boot Windows NT setup to it and see if it'll pick it up. We can delete the petition, should be able to delete the petition and remake it. Round two, hey? Okay. So, let's try doing this. Yay! Now I can fuck you. Oh, okay, yep, no, no worries. Set up a sync. Why? <laughs> I don't understand. Should we just... Alright, you know what? Let's try installing NT before anything with a clean hard drive. Alright. Stupid bloody... See, this would probably be a lot easier if we were just installing DOS-based operating systems, but we're already having issues trying to mix DOS and NT together. Alright, round three. Alright, we'll create a petition. Four gigabytes in slots. Okay. And fat. Yes. DOS 7 should be able to read a FAT16 petition that doesn't have a, uh, a FAT16 allocation unit size. Finally, now the problem is going to be installing DOS. Because what's the bit DOS needs the primary petition to boot from? Hopefully, because like this is the, one of the reasons why I chose FAT because of MTFS. Because the DOS setup will be able to look at the fat Windows NT install and be able to change any of the boot uh, code it needs to. So, here's hoping.
let's see how the Windows NT setup goes. I haven't installed Windows NT for for a long time. It's usually the bastard ass child that gets left out of everything because it's so incompatible. And NT three X I don't even touch. I think I've got Windows NT 3.51 installed on something once and this is not booting off the fucking hard drive Final Stupid bloody retarded fucking boot process Yeah, I've got NT 3.5 installed on something once, and I've only ever gotten NT 3.1 installed in a virtual machine, and that was super hard because you have to manually go and edit some of the files because it doesn't support newer processor architectures. Speaking of which, getting Windows 3.1 to run in MS-DOS 7, because it's lo MS-DOS 7 has long file name support, Windows 3.1 will corrupt the file allocation table without a hex edit to kernel 386 so we'll be doing that as well in this now I hope we don't need a product key because I don't have a product key new do not make an emergency repair disk yes we want games and all multimedia. Not this time. All right. Where are you? Turn off that. Ah, oh, detected the display drivers automatically. Okay. Well, that, that's one hassle solved. What about sound? See, I knew it would be a good idea having the S3 Trio card in this machine, because it's so compatible with everything. It's not powerful or anything like that, but it's just got drivers for everything. This would all be so much easier if Windows NT4 supported installation to a FAT32 petition. I could potentially install everything all on one petition. Of course the same would be true if the DOS-based Windows supported installing to NTFS. But they don't. We'll make sure to reboot that um eject that CD drive this time. Very good. Now this should be pretty fast to boot up because it's using a 7200 RPM drive. Although the IDE bus on this motherboard is really old, it doesn't support more than 40 gigabyte hard drives. So I've got this 80 gigabyte hard drive and I've had to jumper it down to 32 gig. Alright, looks like that display settings are right. The S3 Trio doesn't like anything more than 800 by 600, um, really, it, with this monitor at least. See, so, okay. Yeah, that worked. Maybe it just hates me in, um, well, it doesn't support true color at this resolution.
Oh well. Maybe it just hates me in Windows 3. Alright, there's Windows NT. Okay. Now we shall try... Oh no, hang on. Drivers. We'll do sound drivers next. Multimedia. There it is. Should be easy peasy. Yep. Two, three. That's got to change to 300. That should be it though. You guys should be able to hear the um, the boot up sound now. Oh, come on, eject. Don't need that one anymore. Looking for my Windows 95 CD. Why does it default to 30 seconds? See if the microphone will pick it up. Actually, I'll just turn the volume up. There you go. Very good. Well, that's all the drivers installed there. Okay. Oh, it's got a shut down sound too, I forgot about that. Now we'll be trying to install Windows 95. But first we're going to install DOS and we're going to need to petition it smart. So let's hope that this works. See if I can't get a better view. I don't really have a good tripod. Alright, so what ended up happening is that my camera decided that it was going to play silly buggers on me and record for, I mean, in record in slow motion, and then after it decided to do that, it decided it wanted to record in a completely random frame rate. So, and it was variable as well. So instead of recording at a constant speed, it just decided to go woo. That sounded completely ridiculous. I'm so sorry. So, the rest of the footage from this failure is pretty much unwatchable so I've had to I'm gonna cut it but um, what ended up happening in the end is I reinstalled DOS like seven times and got increasingly frustrated with it because it would not boot um, no matter what I did it just would not boot off that 4 gigabyte FAT16 petition um, I did figure out why so there'll be another video coming of everything working correctly but this video is just a massive failure and I got to test out my um, editing skills and yeah it's just a, this was just a warm-up video the next video is the main one so when my things actually start going right but um yeah thanks for watching guys